This is an awesome story. It may not work out to where everybody is super happy about what you get, but I gotta admit, check this out. Alyssa Milano hugs U.S. Senator Ted Cruz after a civil meeting over the Second Amendment and reveals their talk left her optimistic about the prospect of gun reform. Amazing. Ted Cruz, Second Amendment advocate. Alyssa Milano, gun control advocate, coming together and hugging. Yes! Yes! This is what I hope to see. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's going to make everyone feel better. I'm not saying that, you know, Second Amendment advocates are going to come out being happy because you might have to give a little. And Alyssa Milano will have to give a little as well. But more importantly, I truly believe people like Alyssa Milano, who advocate for gun control, don't know enough about guns. That means if she sat down with Ted Cruz, I'm willing to bet Ted Cruz gave her important information she didn't understand. And it's also important that Ted Cruz gets to hear the perspective of someone like Alyssa Milano because she represents a very large community. I, I have to say, you know, when it comes to the 2A stuff, too many people on the gun control side don't know anything. And that makes it really hard to, to understand how, how there could be two sides to this. When I went to the March for Our Life thing, people were talking about, abandoning, uh, about how they wanted assault rifles banned. And I'm like, congratulations, you've won because they were never illegal. They don't seem to understand that an AR-15 is just a standard semi-auto rifle. They don't know anything about this. And when I would ask them things like, do you think handguns should be banned? Do you think standard semi-auto rifles should be banned? They'd say, no. And I'd be like, then what are you advocating for here? It sounds like many of these people standing in crowds and voting don't understand. They're actually voting against their own interests. But if Ted Cruz can sit down with Alyssa Milano, it says one more, it's, there's something more important. Two different sides of a political debate, meeting and hugging, is exactly what this country needs. There have been many things I've disagreed with Alyssa Milano on, and there's a lot of things I've praised her for, I have. I think she took a principled stance on like Aja Argento. It's been a while, I can't remember. Like the Me Too stuff. Like I don't agree with her going to the Kavanaugh thing and saying what she said, or, like, you know, being an activist on that front. But she has called out bad people on her side. That's respectable. Ted Cruz, I've never been a big fan of Ted Cruz. Not a Republican. Um, I, I like the censorship stuff he's done, you know, but to see them both come together, that to me is, it, it's, it's, it's hopeful or I'm hopeful when I see that, because if this is happening, it means we can actually make progress. Progress might not mean everybody gets happy, but it means we can learn to live with one another in a way where we're satisfied at least. Let's read the story. Before we get started, head over to timcast.com slash donate in order to support my work. There's a PayPal option, a crypto option, a physical address. But the best thing you can do is just share this video to help overcome, you know, uh, on, on YouTube, I'm deranked. But, but I am, I'm trying to, you know, mention Facebook now because these videos do pop up on Facebook. Just in general, for whatever the reason, if you think what I do is good and you're willing to share with people, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for that. It's really one of the best things you can do. But let's read on. They say, actress Alyssa Milano has said that her civil conversation with U.S. Senator Ted Cruz has left her cautiously optimistic about gun reform. This is, this is good news. Let's simmer things down. No more fighting, chilling, hugging, conversations. Meeting at the Republicans' Washington, D.C. office, the pair went back and forth on the partisan topic, debating whether any common ground could be found for over an hour. And as they stood up to leave, at the end of the meeting, Milano even chose to embrace Cruz in a hug and a sh as a show of goodwill. Ted Cruz also talked with Ocasio-Cortez about coming together to end like revolving door policies of some sort. It's been a while. But I, I have tremendous respect for Ted Cruz for repeatedly being willing to do this, to step, to, to, to simmer things down, to, you know, to, to stop the tension and say, I'm going to meet you and we're going to figure this out. Ted Cruz, I have tremendous respect for him doing that. And, that, and it's true for Ocasio-Cortez and, and Alyssa Milano. I'm not going to downplay their role in coming together as well. But this is not the first time Ted Cruz has done this. I think that's important. They were joined by Fred Gutenberg, whose 14-year-old daughter, Jamie, was killed in Parkland in 2018. So we have several photos. There you can see the, the powerful embrace. This is a great photo, man. Can I just, can I just say this seriously? I want to see people come together and have conversations. I want to, you know, I want to see the left and the right. I want to see an end of the violence, an end of the anger. And this is a step in the right direction because they fight on Twitter all the time. They criticize each other. They're mean. And here they are now doing literally the opposite. This is a sign of something good. More of this, less bickering. They say, uh, oh, Alyssa Milano, quote, oh no, I'm sorry. This is Gutenberg. I'm walking out of this hopeful that we can find a way to save lives, Gutenberg told Cruz in a live stream of the conversation. Milano and Cruz have previously clashed over the issue of the Second Amendment, 
with the actress even slamming curses being owned by the gun lobby. What people don't seem to understand about the NRA is that it's made up of people. It is funded by citizens who want to support their rights. It's not a massive gun company. It is an, an organization meant to protect Second Amendment rights um, uh, for the most part. Milano and Cruz have previously, oh, I said that. Cruz has been a leading voice for expansive Second Amendment rights. And a few days after the mass event in West Texas on August 31st, Milano called his advocacy BS. However, the comments didn't put him off accepting her proposal to meet for discussion on the contentious issue. That is very respectable. More people should do this. When you send out social media tweets, I just want you to be mindful of not creating more of a divide. And just be mindful that this government has to function, she said. We have to do something. We cannot not do something anymore because too many people are dying. Now, I, I want to stop here and say, sometimes doing something is the wrong thing. There have been incidents in the past where, I, I, I can't remember which country, I think it was like Denmark, did nothing. They accepted that sometimes crazy people will do crazy things that hurt a lot of people. And if that's the case, we do seek to minimize that, but we also have to recognize sometimes there's nothing you can do. You know, sometimes when we accept that we are a free and open society, people can break the law. Right now, somebody could walk up to somebody else right outside this window and kill somebody. And there's nothing anyone can do to stop it. The police can come and investigate and, and arrest that person eventually, but the crime has already been committed. It was illegal. It still happened. The problem is there are a lot of ways to hurt people, and sometimes people will do it. Now, what the argument from the gun control people is guns make it easier to kill people. If it's not guns, it'll be bombs. It'll be grenades. In Sweden, they have a grenade problem. In the UK, they have a knife problem, so they're banning knives and screwdrivers. It just never ends. Yes, you can start to save more lives when you ban literally everything, but then someone's going to start throwing rocks at somebody else. You know, and so maybe that's what they're saying. Everybody should walk around wearing mittens and big foam suits. But at a certain point, we have to recognize the freer you are, the more risk there is. Mr. Gutenberg also laid in on Cruz, showing him pictures of daughter, of his daughter, one day, there's errors in these all the time, one day before her death on February 14th and saying, this is the last photo I will see of her. He then attacked the senator for making the gun debate partisan, saying, your decision to do this really pissed me off. Do, to what, have this event? That's, no, absolutely not. Alyssa Mao tweeted, I just left. He was gracious. I'm unsure if it changes anything, but appreciative for the opportunity to bridge the divide with civil, meaningful discussion. Link to the entire meeting below. Thank you, Alyssa Milano. Absolutely, I agree with you. I, 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 cannot, I cannot stress how much I, have, I, I respect you so much for doing this, even though I disagree with you on a lot of things, and, I, and we've agreed on some things. That is, that is a statement that, may, that warms my heart. And, and I, I want to give everybody a hug and have meetings like this and simmer things down. I think if that's what we can leave with, we might not change anything, but at least we had meaningful discussions. Yes. Yes. Understanding other people. Like Daryl Davis, the guy who de-radicalized Klan members. He met with them. He talked with them. And that's the first step. Absolute. Bravo. Milano asked Cruz to encourage Senate Republicans to debate measures such as universal background checks for firearm purchases. Fred Gutenberg even said, thank you, Senator Ted Cruz, for in inviting Alyssa Milano, Dad of the Decade, and I today. You were gracious with the 90 minutes you took for our very candid conversation. I look forward to continuing with it. This is fantastic. I'm not going to, I can keep saying it, but seriously. After concluding the meeting, Milano tweeted, I just left. Oh, I saw that already. Speaking later to Chris Cuomo on Fox News, she added, I'm cautiously optimistic that he knows the issue and hopeful, I guess, that he's willing to do something about it. He takes a lot of money from the NRA. He has been on the wrong side of, the, of this issue, but I do understand how fossilized we are as far, uh, as far as parties. I disagree with Alyssa Milano, and I don't com I'm not a gun nut, never been a gun person, but I also think too many Democrats have no idea what they're talking about. I don't think Ted Cruz is on the wrong side of the issue. I think Ted Cruz has a voter base that knows how guns work and knows what they're talking about, and Democrats know too little. I, I don't understand how we, can how we can have a real argument about con gun control if Democrats think semi-automatic means it, it's fully automatic. We've seen this, was it CNN or something, where the guy said fully semi-automatic? Like, they don't know what these words mean. What's important about this is the civility. What's important about this is that Ted Cruz can actually provide that context to her because she probably wouldn't hear that normally. This is why conversation is so important. And seeing her perspective... Ted Cruz might actually think about a real solution that would help them in the way they see things. That's about it. 
Cruz tweeted, always grateful for the opportunity to engage in positive civil discussion on substantive issues. Today's meeting with Alyssa Milano and Fred Gutenberg was productive and respectful, and I appreciate their willingness to come here with an open mind. Fantastic. I got one more segment coming up in a couple, uh, couple minutes, and I will see you all there.